Hi friends, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. If you didn't know, it was recently my birthday. I turned 28 and it got me thinking what are some books that I should really read before I turn 30. So this is my 30 before 30 kind of challenge. I have a list of 30 books that I would like to read before I turn 30. In some cases these are because they're like classics in their genre or just classics in general and I just feel like I should read them. Although there, I don't believe there are like books you should read to be like a reader or anything like that but I just feel like I want to have read them and why not try and do it before I turn 30 in two years time. Um, and some of them are because I've had them for a while and it's about time I bloody get to them. <laughs> I do have it split into sections, so my list consists of some classics. I don't know if you can see these, but some classics, some fantasy, some sci-fi, and then I have some non-fiction and just one other book that I really wanted to get to before I turn 30. So I will go through them. I might try and get through them a bit quickly just because there's 30 books here. So I'll start with the classics. I have a little stack here. I'm just going to grab from the top I guess. I'm not just going to grab from the top because these two kind of go together but I have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger and Emma by Jane Austen and the reason these two go together are, is that they're both ones that my granny kind of gave to me and thought I should read. I think this was actually her copy of Catcher in the Rye, I think. Um, and then she got me a copy of Emma. I have started Emma and I didn't finish it. I was enjoying it but I just wasn't that used to reading classics at the time. I have since read other Jane Austen books and enjoyed them so I think it's about time I came back to Emma and finally finished it off. And then yeah, the Catcher in the Rye. I feel like that would be good to get done as well seeing as again it was recommended or gifted to me by my granny it's also short I think it's like the classics equivalent of like a YA so <laughs> hopefully shouldn't be too hard to read like some classics can be I also really want to read Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier I've heard good things very good things I've always been intrigued I don't know what to expect I think it's a gothic story if I remember correctly and I don't really read many gothic stories so I am intrigued and I just think this is one I should get to I've also had it for a while <laughs> also I'm really not a fan of this edition like the cover's nice but I don't like this green spine it's not nice but I'm not going to replace it unless I read it and love it Next up is a book that was on my radar anyway but uh, Jez has read it recently and really wants me to read it and that is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. This one is actually on my September TBR. There are a few of these books that ended up on my September TBR. Like I planned the list for this 30 before 30 before I made my September TBR but then a few of them ended up on my September TBR anyway. Uh, so I'm off to a good start which is nice. Um, but yeah, Jez wants me to read this. He enjoyed it and he wants me to see what I think. It was one that was on my radar anyway because it's a classic, it's very well known. The next classic on my list is 1984 by George Orwell. I've read Animal Farm by George Orwell and I really really enjoyed it so I feel like I should definitely check this one out. And also I have an audiobook of that one narrated by Stephen Fry who is an excellent audiobook narrator so I will be listening to that one. Next is another one I also have the audiobook for so that's why this particular book ended up on the list. I wanted to choose one from this author but I wasn't necessarily set on which one and then I realised I had the audiobook for this one so I thought well we'll go with that one then. And that's Far From The Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I have a few Thomas Hardys. I have been very intrigued to check out his books for a while and just haven't got around to it but I've heard he writes very very emotional books and I love me an emotional book so I don't know if this is one of the emotional ones or if it's a bit more chill but if it is I'm ready to be destroyed. <laughs> Next is one that Beth has been trying to tell me to read for a while and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Obviously like super classic classic. <laughs> Up there with Jane Austen. All of the Brontes. 
I have read uh, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and I've read one of the Anne Brontes. So Charlotte Bronte is the only sister I've never read anything from. So I am intrigued to check this one out. I've heard really good things again. I mean, I've heard good things about all classics, you know, the classics. Um, and the last two classics on my list I don't own yet, but hope to one day. <laughs> so I have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Just, you know, interested. And then I have uh, The Rainbow by D.H. Lawrence. I think that's the one I'm going to want to read. Um, his books are set in Nottinghamshire and I live in Nottinghamshire so I like, really wanted to check them out for a while. So why not put them on this list to make me actually get on with it? <laughs> so those are all the classics on my list. Next I will go into fantasy and I will start with the one I don't own which is, uh, is it The Wizards of Earthsea? I've just got it written down on my list as Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I feel like this is another one of those like classic fantasies um, and I really want to check it out. I know you can get a bind up of like a few of the novels in the series. I don't know if it's all of them or not, but I'm intrigued to check that one out. I've heard mixed things. I feel like a couple of years ago a load of YouTubers did like a uh, read along for that series and none of them finished it. So I am intrigued. I'm kind of expecting, I'm kind of going into it with low expectations because of that. <laughs> but I am intrigued and I do want to check it out for myself. So the next fantasy book on this list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I feel like, again, like this is a more modern fantasy, it was released this century, but I feel like it is in a way like a fantasy classic. Everyone's heard of The Name of the Wind. Most people have read it. I feel like I'm one of the last who hasn't read it. And I really want to get to it soon. I've been really in the mood to read it lately, I don't know why, but I just really fancy picking it up. Um, I have been putting it off for a while because I've been trying to wait for book three and that does not seem likely to happen and so I've just decided I'm just going to get on with it. <laughs> just want to read it and check it out for myself and we'll see if that ends up being a bad plan or not. It might end up being that I love it so much that the fact that there is no book three causes me great pain but we'll find out. <laughs> Next I have a uh, Hogfather. I always thought it was The Hogfather but it's just Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. I've had this book for many years now. I don't remember when I got it but it was a while ago and I feel like I intend to read it every single December and then I never get to it so I'm putting it on this list. I have to read it in the next two years or else. <laughs> and again I'm pretty sure I have the audiobook for this one so it wouldn't even be that hard. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna find this. This is a Discworld novel which is like Terry Pratchett's series. They're all set in the same world I think. I have no idea what number Discworld it is but it seems to be quite far into the series and I have read none of the Discworld books so I don't know if that's going to really impact how I find this one. I'm mainly just interested because it's like Christmassy. <laughs> right the next two books go together but I left one of them in the other room so we're just going to pretend I'm just going to put picture here we're going to pretend it's here but it's uh, The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. I read the first book in 2020. So I think it was November, so almost four years ago now, and I still have not carried on with the series. At the time of filming this I am actually about 70 pages into The Well of Ascension because it's another one that ended up on my September TBR. So again, I'm making progress with this already, which I'm really pleased about. But yeah, I really want to finish this series. Ideally, this year, I would like to not let it go another two years before I finally finish it off. But at least by putting it on this list, I know I'm going to finish this series before I turn 30. <laughs> Next up is another fantasy classic and one that I just feel like I have to read. It just seems like one of like the ultimate fantasy classics from the way everyone talks about it. And that's The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. I actually picked this one up very recently. I am very intrigued by this. I have absolutely no idea what it's about, but I just feel like everyone always talks about it as like, one of the classic fantasies and I just I'm a fantasy lover so I want to read the classics <laughs> and kind of see where it began in a way. Speaking of where it began or not began but where I guess where we fantasy as we know it today sort of began 
I would like to reread. This is the only reread on my list. I would like to reread The Lord of the Rings. I'm just holding up the Fellowship of the Ring to stand in for all of The Lord of the Rings because I'm cheating and counting it as one book because kind of technically is. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd like to reread The Lord of the Rings. It's been a while since I read it and it's my favourite book of all time. So I just want to reread it before I turn 30 and I thought why not just put it on this list again to make sure I actually do it. And then part of the reason I want to reread it as well is so that I can finally pick up The Silmarillion. I don't know if I need to reread Lord of the Rings to read The Silmarillion, but I'd like to. I've always been a bit intimidated by The Silmarillion, but I think I'm getting to a point now where the books that used to intimidate me don't really anymore because I'm getting more and more used to reading all these epic fantasies. And so now I think is the time to dive back into The Lord of the Rings and back into Middle-earth, reread The Lord of the Rings and then finally read The Silmarillion. And then the last fantasy on my list is one I am still a bit intimidated by, despite what I just said about not really being intimidated anymore, but I am a bit intimidated by this. Not because of this book itself, but because of the series as a whole, uh, and that is The Eye of the World which is the first book in The Wheel of Time, which is like a 14 or 15 book series, and book one alone is nearly 800 pages. Like 770 pages. Like these are long books, and I've heard some people say like the series is so long it spans a really long amount of time, and I've heard people say there are so many characters to keep track of, and honestly it scares me a bit. And I really really want to check it out. Even though it scares me a bit, I want to check it out and give it a go. So next I have my sci-fi. Like there's a lot of classic sci-fis. There's a couple that I just really want to read and that are not necessarily like the older classics but they're just such staples of the genre. And then there's at least one in there that I've just owned for so long that I'm like I really need to just read this now because it's getting ridiculous. And in fact that one's on top so we'll start with that one. It's Invictus by Ryan Grodden. I have had this for so long now that it's just not even funny anymore. And like I need to either read it or just get rid of it. In fact, you know what? This is not a read it or unhole it challenge. Except in the case of this book. If I haven't read this book by the time I turn 30 then it's a sign and I am just unhauling it. Because by that point I will have had it for a ridiculous amount of time. This came out in 2017, so that's like at least seven years that I've had it so far. So by the time I turn 30, I'll have had it for like nine years and I won't have read it. So <laughs> if I haven't read this by then, I'm just getting rid of it. I'm saying it now, I'm getting rid of it if I haven't read it by the time I turn 30. Uh, next up I have Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I feel like Adrian Tchaikovsky is just such a big name in the, fant uh, the sci-fi genre and I really want to read it. I've heard such good things about this series in particular as well. He has so much sci-fi out, it's insane. But I've heard so many good things about this series. I really want to check it out soon. <laughs> and yeah, he's just this big name in sci-fi. He publishes like two books a year or more at the moment. It's bonkers. <laughs> I've got another one that I just kind of want to put on this list so that I actually get to it, but in this case I am still really excited for it, I just haven't got around to it yet, and that's Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This just sounds so good, and it sounds really similar to that film Total Recall, and I love that film. <laughs> so yeah, I've always just really wanted to pick this up, it just sounds so interesting. And I think when I first bought this I was still very much a YA reader and the synopsis just really called to me, but because I was a YA reader I was a bit intimidated by it, but now I read like pretty much exclusively adult books so this doesn't scare me anymore, I just need to get to it and I really want to soon. Okay so another one that I wouldn't necessarily call a sci-fi classic but maybe a sci-fi staple is Leviathan Wakes by James S. A. Corey which is an author duo but I can't remember who the two people are right now. <laughs> Um, but this is the first book in the Expanse series and I really want to read it. I hear about it all the time, especially since James F. A. Corey have just released the first book in a whole new series and everyone's talking about them at the moment. So I really want to check this series out 
Jez and I also really want to watch the adaption of it and I want to read the book before I watch the adaption so I really need to get onto that. Also I don't know how well you can see but like instead of having a big sticker saying now an Amazon Prime show it just says in a little line you probably can't see but my camera's on manual focus so I can't change it but it just says now a Prime original series in really small text and it's like yes if you have to put it on the cover that's how you do it. But yeah, I'm really excited to get to this. Again, it's just getting to it. And that is like the first book in a nine book series. So it doesn't intimidate me, but it is a commitment. Um, and then some books that I sort of in my head consider to be like sci-fi classics or classic sci-fi. I have, first of all, Jurassic Park by, is it Michael Crichton? I think. I really want to read that. The film was just a bit too much for me. It kind of scared the pants off me but I feel like in book form it might be really interesting and also one of my favourite books is The Great Zoo of China by Matthew Riley which is a similar concept but with dragons so I feel like if I like that I'm gonna like Jurassic Park. <laughs> I also really want to read 2001 A Space Odyssey by Arthur C. Clarke. I feel like he is like the science fiction writer like he's got a sci-fi award named after him he just seems like a legend within the sci-fi genre and I've never read any of his books so I really want to pick this one up and then again once I've read it I can watch the film finally <laughs> which will be nice also this is not long it's quite short it's under 300 pages I think she says yeah it's like 250 pages it's so short my only issue with this is that I know there's sequels and I feel like they are in wildly different covers than this so like I'm never going to get a matching set which bums me out a bit but it's fine I just really want to read it. I would also like to check out Dune by Frank Herbert. Again I want to watch the film but I want to read the book first. This is apparently the greatest science fiction novel ever written. I've just read that on the back and again I feel like it's just one of those classic sci-fis kind of to find the genre almost. It's one you always hear people talking about. And then the last on my sci-fi section of this list is The Algebraist by Ian M. Banks. Mainly I just want to read a book by Ian M. Banks because again he's one of those big sci-fi names that I always see around. Um, but this is just the one that I have. It was a gift from my lovely Jez. <laughs> so this is the one I'm gonna check out first by him. This is again this is one that's actually on my September TBR so I will be reading this very soon. I am making progress and I am happy about it. Next I have some non-fiction books that I really want to read. First is one I just found in a charity shop I believe and it just spoke to me and I still haven't read it and I really want to and I think Jez is interested so we might listen to the audiobook of this one together. Again non-fiction is not something I reach for a lot so I've not read it a lot because it kind of scares me because it's not my thing but I've been reading more this year with Jez we've been listening to audio non-fiction audiobooks together and I've been realizing that it's actually not as scary as I think it is in my head so I feel like it's finally time to get to this one and that is Quiet The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking and as an introvert I really want to see what this has to say I feel like it might be I mean it might just be a bit of a flop for me personally or it might be really impactful and meaningful and I want to check it out in case it is the latter. <laughs> um, another non-fiction I have is Talking to My Country by Stan Grant. I've had this for a very long time and I just really need to pick it up. Again I just never really lean towards non-fiction but I'm just finding it more engaging than I thought I would so I think I need to get to this. Um, but this is written by an Aboriginal Australian and he's kind of talking about racism within Australia I think by the sounds of it. I feel like this is quite an important book to read even though I'm not there now I still want to read it and just educate myself make myself more aware. And then the last non-fiction on my list is Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. This is one I've had for a very long time. Right my camera stopped recording because it just turns itself off after 30 minutes and it's really annoying and I don't know when it stopped so I don't know how much it got about me saying that I want to read Bad Feminist because I like feminist non-fiction and Roxane Gay is one of those quite well-known names within the feminist sphere 
and I want to read it and I've had it a while. So the last book on my list doesn't fit into any of these genres so it's just kind of floating on its own. I suppose if it was to go anywhere it might be fantasy. And that is If Cats Disappeared From The World by Genki Kawamura and I have really got into my translated fiction especially short translated fiction and especially short translated fiction about cats or books or both <laughs> but when I was first getting into translated fiction um, there were three that I kind of originally bought which were this one um, The Travelling Cat Chronicles and The Guest Cat and I have read The Travelling Cat Chronicles and I've read The Guest Cat so this is the only one from those original three translated fictions that I bought that I still haven't read. My translated fiction shelf has grown quite a lot, I've read others, I just still haven't got to this one and I really want to because it sounds really kind of powerful and emotional which I love in books. I love feeling strong emotions, I love it when a book can really make me feel something even if that emotion is sadness. The fact that it's pulled such a strong feeling out of me just yeah I love that. So I'm very intrigued to pick this one up. I hope it gives me lots of feels. And I feel like it's time to get to it seeing as I've read the other two that I picked up originally but not this one. So those are 30 books that I want to read before I turn 30. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you think of them and if you think that they're good choices I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And if you want to keep up to date with me getting on with these 30 books, I am planning to do like a wrap up video when I turn 30 and like revisit this list. So subscribe for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.